Okay, let's look at the second part of our lesson. We're going to look at lesson number six, division of rational expressions. So this is on page 409 in your workbook if you'd like to follow along there. Now, just like we did with our last lesson in multiplication of rational expressions, we took a look at how do we multiply rational numbers. Well, let's quickly review how do we divide rational numbers. Okay, so if we look at example number one, I'm not even going to worry about B and C. We're just going to take a look at A. So the steps are going to be very similar as to what we do with multiplying in that step number one, we want to look to see if we can simplify anything or factor anything out. Um, and then we're going to divide and then always double check that your answer is reduced and simplified as well. So if we look at A, we have 7 over 10 divided by 3 over 14. So let's look at that first fraction, 7 over 10. Is there anything that I can do there to simplify it? No, 7 over 10 is already reduced. Same thing, take a look at 3 over 14. Can I reduce this at all? No, that's as simplified as it's going to get. So now we're going to simply just divide. So remember, what are the rules for dividing fractions? So our step... You flip that second fraction, and we're going to multiply. So this is going to become then 14 over 3, and it's actually now a multiplication statement. So remember, you flip the second fraction, and you multiply. So now again, before I start, I want to see, is there anything that I can reduce? So I know 7 over 10, I can't reduce anymore. 14 over 3, I can't reduce anymore. But let's look diagonally. So 7 and 3, is there anything that I can do to divide each of those by? There isn't. But now, let's look at 10 and 14. Is there a number in common that I could factor out of each of these? There is. There's 2. So I could divide 10 by 2, and I can divide 14 by 2. So this is really going to be equal to 7 over 5 times this is 7 over 3. Now we simply just multiply. Top times top, bottom times bottom. 7 times 7 is 49, divided by 5 times 3, which is 15. And again, we're always going to double check, can I reduce my final answer? And I can't. This is the final answer, 49 over 15. Okay, so we're going to apply these same rules to when we're dividing rational expressions. Always think, keep the first fraction the same, flip the second one, and then we're simply going to multiply. So let's look at our first example where we're dividing just simply monomials. So we're going to look at example number two. So it's like simplify, but it says at this stage, do not state the restrictions on the variables. So we are not going to state the restrictions right now because there's going to be a little bit of a difference when we're stating the non-permissible values with the division statement, um, but we're going to take a look at that after. So let's just work on simplifying. So again, we're going to cross out B here just so that you have more space. I'm not going to worry about that one. So let's look at I've got 16a divided by 9b squared, all divided by 32a squared divided by 15b. Now, before I start simplifying anything, let's turn it into a multiplication statement. So remember the rules are you keep the first fraction the same. So we have 16a divided by 9b squared. We're going to flip this second fraction. So this becomes 15b all divided by 32a squared, and then this is now a multiplication symbol. So now we're going to multiply. Before that, look to see is there anything that I can reduce by. So if I'm looking at my first fraction here, 16 and 9, can I divide by anything in common? Okay, looking at the second fraction, 15 and 32, could I divide each of those by something? I can't, and again, there's the B and A, I can't do anything with that. So now, because of that, I'm going to look diagonally. So let's look at the 16 and 32. Is there a number in common that I could factor out? There is, a 16. So I'm going to divide 16 by 16, and I'm going to divide 32 by 16 as well. Okay, now let's look at 9 and 15. Is there a number that I could divide each of those by? Yep, I could divide each of those by 3. So I'll divide 9 by 3, and I'll divide the 15 by 3. Okay, so let's deal with the coefficients first before we look at the variables. I want to write it nicely. So what's 16 divided by 16? 16 divided by 16 is 1, so this is like 1a. 
9 divided by 3 is 3, so this is 3b squared. All times, 15 divided by 3 is 5, so this is 5b divided by 32 divided by 16 is 2, and so I have 2a squared. Okay, so now that I've dealt with the coefficients, now let's look at the variables. So, and a squared, I can each of those. So that's going to cancel out this whole a, and then I'm just canceling, canceling out one of the a's. Okay, now let's look at the b's. So same thing, I can cancel out one whole b, and then I can cancel out one of the b's. So now I'm going to multiply top to bottom. So on my top, I'm left with 1 times 5, which is 5, all And then b times a is simply just ab. 5 divided by 6ab. Always double check. Can I reduce this at all? I can't. So here's my kind of deal with the uh, coefficients first and then deal with the variables if it makes it a little bit easier for you. Okay, so now let's go back and talk about those non-permissible values, which are very, very important. Okay, so I want you to take a look at the example that they're giving us here. Of a divided by b by c divided by d. My highlighter and highlight this for you. So. It's what's in the denominator. Okay, so I'm going to highlight it up here as well. Okay, so if I go back to my pen, my non permissible value in this first fraction is simply. Okay, now let's look at the second fraction. So if I look at the second fraction, c over d, non permissible value, it's in the denominator, so it's simply just. So again, I'm going to highlight d there. And then I'm going to write out my non permissible value is d. As the first step in simplifying a divided and multiply to obtain a over c. So this is just a fancy way of saying keep the first fraction the same, flip the second. And so pay attention to this second, second fraction, c over d. When we flip it, it now becomes d over c. So this actually introduces another non-permissible value. So remember, a non-permissible value is any time there's a variable in the denominator. We now have another variable in the denominator. That is C. So we would have to also include C as a non-permissible value. Okay, so this is what's a little bit different than multiplying rational expressions. We have that extra non-permissible value. Okay, so this will be very, very important that you make sure you know that there's permissible value in the denominators initially. And then once you flip that fraction again here, like they've shown you, we're going to have another non-permissible value there. Okay, so just think a non-permissible value exists any time there is a variable in the denominator. Okay, so take this and we're going to apply it with the next example that we're going to do. So let's go to the next page. Um, okay, so at the very top, again, I would probably star this and highlight it. This just summarizes what we just said on the previous page. So it says, for a division of this type, we need to consider non-permissible values at B, C, and D. So remember, any variable which appears in the denominator at any stage in the simplification should be considered a non-permissible value. Okay? So I'm going to actually skip example three, and we're just going to go to some brand new examples down here. So we're going to look at example number four. So it says, simplify and state the restrictions on the variable. So remember on the previous page, I said, before we do anything, let's turn this into a multiplication statement. So we're going to do that first, and then we're going to list all of the non-permissible values. Okay, so I'm going to keep the first fraction the same here, and I don't need to factor anything. Everything's been factored, so we're good to go. So we're going to keep the first fraction the same, x plus 1, all divided by, this is x minus 2, times x plus 3. Now flip this second fraction, and then we're going to multiply. So this is going to be x times x plus 3, 
all divided by 2 times x plus 1. And then now we're going to becoming a multiplication statement. So I'm going to take that highlighter out again. Where are all of my non-permissible values? So at the initial beginning of the question, here were non-permissible values. Here were non-permissible values. And then right here in the denominator of this second fraction again. Okay, so when I go to state my NPVs, I have quite a few that I want to list. Remember from last lesson, when we're stating our restrictions, we want to from least to greatest, okay? So I'm just going to do my NPVs right up here diagonally so I don't run into B. So my first non-permissible value furthest to the left, I'm going to say is X cannot be equal to negative 3. Then we're going to have negative 1. Then we're going to have positive 2. And those are all of my non-permissible values. Oh, and I missed one. Sorry, 0. So I'm going to put the 0 after the negative 1. And then we have the 2. So there are all of my non-permissible values. Now I can just go ahead and multiply. So remember, we're looking for things that cancel out. So right away, I see that I have an x plus 1 on the top and x plus 1 on the bottom. I also see that I have an x plus 3 on the bottom and an x plus 3 on the top. Now, multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. So on the top, we're going to be left with x all divided by, always put your coefficient in front, so we're going to put the 2 in front, and then times, this is x minus 2. Is there anything that I can do to reduce this? So is my final answer. Okay, so remember, you can always look like this and then highlight your non or you can also attach the restrictions down at the bottom beside your answer so we can see it. So there's the first one. Alright, so now we're going to look at example B. I like this one and I say it's often like a test question because they've also written it in a different form. So they've written it where we have one fraction on top divided by the second fraction on the bottom. What I always do first is change this into the format of example A. So I'm going to rewrite this as, this is going to be equal to 4x plus 12 divided by 3x plus 12, all divided by, this is 3x squared plus 9x, all divided by x plus 4 squared. Okay, you want to write it out that way so it's easier to visualize. Okay, so how would I do this question? Unfortunately, I'm going to have to factor first. It's not already factored for us like it was in A. So we're going to factor the first fraction. What can I do to that numerator? Well, I can take out a 4. So I take out the 4 and I'm left with x plus 3, all divided by, what can I take out of the bottom? I can take out a 3. So then this becomes x plus 3. Okay, all divided by, what can I take out of the numerator of the second fraction? I can take out a 3x, so then I'm left with x plus 3, all divided by, I'm going to rewrite this x plus 4 squared. I want to see both of the x plus 4s, because I don't want to forget to cancel one of them out. Okay, so I've rewritten it that way. Okay, so now we can go ahead and state our NPVs. So I'm going to take this highlighter out again. So remember, we're going to have our first denominator. Those will be a non-permissible value. I'll have another one here. And then once we go to flip our second fraction, we will see another non-permissible value. Okay, so let's change this into a multiplication statement. So our first fraction stays the same. So I've got 4 times x plus 3 all divided by 3 times x plus 4. Flip the second fraction, so we're going to have x plus 4 times x plus 4, all divided by 3x times x plus 3. And now we're going to multiply. Okay, taking that highlighter out again, though, I don't want to forget that I now have another non-permissible value in the denominator here. Okay, so I'm going to state my NPVs. I'm going to do them up at the top over here again and write our restrictions in order from least to greatest. So my first one I'm going to say is x cannot be equal to, this is negative 4, negative 3, and 0. So there are my restrictions. Okay, so now we can look to see what can I cancel out. I can see that I have an x plus 3 on the top, an x plus 3 on the bottom. 
I also see that I have an x plus 4 on the bottom and 1x plus 4 on the top. Okay, there's nothing else I can cancel out, so let's multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. So on the top, I'm going to be left with 4 times, this is x plus 4, all divided by, I can multiply 3 times 3, which is 9, and then I'm left with just an x. Okay, look to see, is there anything else that I can cancel out? I can't, so that would be my final answer. Make sure you guys remember, you cannot just cancel out these x's. You cannot do that, okay? You have to look for an exact match with x plus 4. So I'm just going to go back and erase that, okay? So I'm, my final answer again is 4 times x plus 4, all divided by 9x, okay? And again, we could state the restrictions down here as well if you'd like. Um, x cannot be equal to, we said negative 4, negative 3, and 0. Okay, any questions? All right, so let's move on to the next page. Okay, so example number 5, star this question. This is a very nice question because this is where we are combining, multiplying, and dividing. So multiply and divide. But so indicated operations for each of the following expressions, express final answers in lowest terms, and identify the non-permissible values. So I'm not going to worry about A, okay? You'll be able to practice stuff like that in the homework. I want to go through question B with you. Now, this one, you can see there are two operations. I've got a division, and then I've got a multiplication, and then you'll also notice here we have brackets. So, what acronym must we remember and what must we follow when we're doing a question with multiple operations? Remember BEDMAS. Okay, and what does BEDMAS stand for again? Brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So, you have to make sure that you pay attention to the order of BEDMAS. It's going to be very, very important here, okay? So, if we look at B, like I said, we have the division, the multiplication, and then we have the brackets. So what must we deal with first? We have to deal with what's inside the brackets first. And then once we've dealt with what's then we can do the last operation, which is to simply divide. Now, what do we need to do first, though? We simply need to factor. Nothing yet. So let's go ahead and start factoring. So because I've crossed out A, I have this whole space question now. So B, I'm just going to rewrite down here. Okay, so my factoring in the numerator, can I take out? I can take out a 10m. So if I take out a 10m, I am left with 2m plus 3 all divided by, in the bottom, this is a difference of squares. So we're going to have 3 minus 2m times 3 plus 2m. Okay. All divided by. In this numerator, I can take out an 11m. So I'm going to be left with m squared minus 1. All divided by. Oh, they've made these ones tricky for us. Okay, so this trinomial, I'm going to factor up here at the top. So I've got 2m squared minus m minus 3. So I would need to take that 2 out in front of the m squared, but I can't. So I'm going to have to go 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6. So what two numbers multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1? That's negative 3 and 2. So now this is going to be 2m squared. I'm going to group the 2m with this first term and then minus 3m minus 3. Okay, factor something out of the first two terms and then factor something out of the second two. So the first two terms I can take out a 2m, so I'll be left with m plus 1. And then the second one I want to take out that negative 3. Then I'm going to be left with m plus 1 as well. Okay, now I can take out that m plus 1, so I'll take out the m plus 1 and I'll be left with 2m minus 3. So there is my factored form for that trinomial, so I'll put that back into the fraction up here. So this is m plus 1 times 2m minus 3. 
Okay, and then times, uh, in the top, there's nothing I can take out, so that's just 2m plus 3, all divided by m minus 1. And close the brackets. Okay, so this question is great because you get to practice all different types of factoring, and then we're going to have multiple operations. Okay, so remember, you guys, non-principal values... And before I start working, I'm going to simply highlight any time I have the denominator. I'm going to have something there. I'll have something here, something here, and something here. Okay? So what did I say we're going to deal with first? Remember, we're going to deal with the brackets. Okay? So in the brackets, I'm simply multiplying. Oh, and have you guys noticed the mistake that I made? I'm not done factoring. Where else do I need to factor still? Right here. This is still a difference of squares. So I'm going to rewrite this all out again. i got to keep going before I can start. So my first fraction, nothing changes. So 10m times 2m plus 3, all divided by, this is 3 minus 2m times 3 plus 3, all divided by, brackets. this is 11m. This becomes m plus 1 times m minus 1. And then times 2m. Okay, now I'm good to go. So let's deal with what's in the bracket first. We're just multiplying, so we can just cancel things out. So what am I going to cancel out first that I see? Okay, I see an m minus 1 on top and m minus 1 on the bottom. I also see a 2m plus 3 on the top. Oh, sorry, I can't do that. That's a 2m minus 3. I got too excited. So I'll go back and change that. Sorry, sorry. So this was 2m plus 3. I cannot take that out. Okay, uh, anything else? Can I take anything else? Oh, the m plus 1. I can see that. So I can take out an m plus 1 here and an m plus 1 there. Okay, so let's rewrite. What are we left with? So again, this first fraction, plus 3, all over minus 2m, times 3 plus 2m, divided by, open the brackets, what am I left with? On the top, I have 11m times 2m plus 3, all divided by 2m minus 3. Okay, so now it's like I'm dealing with just two fractions and they're being divided. What are the rules again? Keep the first fraction the same, flip the second, and multiply. So again, this first fraction, nothing happened, so this stayed as 10. We haven't done adding or subtracting yet, so I'm just going to continue to kind of write over it. But to flip the second fraction, so this becomes 2m minus 3, all divided by 11m times 2m plus 3, and now we're going to multiply. Okay, what should I be doing now that I flipped that second fraction? Remember, we're going to have to find the non-permissible values. So take that highlighter out again, and now I have a new denominator. I need to account for this as my non-permissible values. Okay, now again, we're just multiplying, so let's cancel things out that we can. What jumps out to you right away? I see a 2m plus 3 on the top here, 2m plus 3 on the bottom. I see an m on the top and an m on the bottom. Um, anything else that I can cancel out? Now, I can't see anything, but look at something that looks very similar. Look at this 2m minus 3 on top here, and this 3 minus 2m over here. They're not the same, but they're similar. Do you guys remember what we can do? We've seen questions like this before. I'm going to take out a negative out of this bracket. If I take out a negative, this will become negative 3, and this would become... 2m. Same thing as what's on top. So now I could cancel this out. What's on the, what's on the top? Okay. Introduce this negative now. So let's rewrite. What are we left with? So on the top up here, we're left with 10 
divided by, this is negative 3 plus 2m. Okay. And then is there anything in this um, second fraction? No, everything's been canceled out. Okay, but the only thing is, oh, except for the 11. So times, 1 stays on the top here, and then we're left with just an 11. Okay, so now let's multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. So this is going to be equal to, I'm just going to put my equal signs, 10 times 1 is 10, all divided by, this is negative 11, times 3 plus 2m. Okay, so now, can the negative stay in the denominator, you guys? Note the negative must go in the numerator. So I'm going to write this as, or you can write it just beside. So this would be like negative 10, all divided by, this is 11, times 3 plus 2m. There's nothing else that I can cancel out. So my final answer. Okay, so sorry, I was hesitating for a second looking at the workbook to make sure that I got the right answer and the workbook um, cancel out the M so that error on their part so just in case solutions um, this is your final answer okay the workbook did not eliminate the M's okay so there's our final answer but the only thing I'm left to do now is I have to list all of those NPVs all of those restrictions so I'm going to go back Go and pay attention to all of that highlighting that I had, okay? So all of my questions, I have to go through them. And remember, we want to write them in order from left to right. So to thing up, m cannot be equal to, we had plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3 over 2, and 0. So instead of writing negative 1, positive, a negative 3 over 2, positive 3 over 2. Okay, so this question, definitely a lot of work. A lot of steps have gone into this. Okay, we've got the whole order of operations. So we've got brackets, division, multiplication. You've got factoring. You've got tricky factoring to do. Um, so this is one of those questions where you would want to make sure that you're comfortable with doing because you would probably see this... Um, on a test of some sort, okay? So that sums up all of our questions from the lesson, okay? So you will see your homework that is posted on the classroom. You're going to have homework from, oops, and this kind of went over top. There we go. You're going to have homework from the workbook for the multiplication section, the division section, and and attaching a worksheet that you guys can work on um, as well as an answer key for you to double check your work and then next week we are going to be moving on to adding and subtracting rationals as well as solving rational expressions um, and then I'm also going to be giving you a formative quiz and so that quiz is going to cover everything that we've done here this week multiplying and dividing as well as touch on um, adding and subtracting that you guys are going to see next week, okay? So um, also stay tuned. I will probably in the next day or two, I will also post some solutions on a video um, of questions from the homework. So I'll go through and kind of see which ones would maybe be the more challenging homework questions and I'm going to create a video just showing the step-by-step -step process. So there'll definitely be another question like the one we just did here with the order of operations um, where it's a little bit more complex. Okay, so have a great week, you guys. Make sure that you are emailing if you have any questions. Okay, talk to you guys later.